<laughs> it's true. We, we, right. we did not rehearse <laughs> them knowing exactly which order it was in, so it's kind of I'm trying to, I don't know if it's going to confuse everyone, and it's like a test. A test for them to see if they can go in the order on the screen, or a test for us in the audience if they decide to mix and match it up. So, well. Props to whoever did it, because they got it right. Look at that. So props to, props to you guys. All right, great. Well, my job is just about done, which is to make sure that you know that the real fun is going to continue. So once again, thank you for being here. Jay Weintraub, founder of InsureTech Connect. And uh, let's get to the how. I mean, Simon Sinek may be upset that we don't have a why, but we're going to do the how for now. So Michael, thank you. Thanks. All right, so this chat is about, uh, is about mobile. Um, so we got some, some folks uh, strolling in here, but we'll get started since uh, the, the louder. Louder. All right. Can, you, can everybody hear me? <laughs> check, check. All right. I will just speak louder. So, yeah, this this uh, this chat's about mobile only, and um, you know, I th you think about it, it's it's almost kind of funny that we talk about mobile in terms like it's the exception. Um, you know, when if if you look at the stats. I was looking at some stats the other day. So, so 2015 was the year. Last year was the year that mobile stopped being the exception and started to become the norm. So if you look at the numbers, in 2015, there were more users, more individual users whose only access to the internet was mobile um, you know, versus, versus only on the desktop. So most people access both ways. They've got a phone, they've got a computer, right? But last year was the year that it flipped. It used to be that uh, most people, you know, if, there, if anybody only got there one way, it was sort of the old school, it, you know, went to the desktop. So now m mobile is officially the norm. So, you know, I just bring that up because as, uh, you know, a company, you should think about, you should not be thinking about mobile as, you know, something you'll get to. It's your customers are already there, right? Most of your customers technically are there on mobile, you know, so it should, should be the, the, the most important part of your business. So we have an awesome panel here today that I'm going to try to try to keep organized. Um, I'm going to let these guys introduce themselves, some rock stars of the mobile business and insurance, um, so they know more than just about anybody about it. Um, I'm just here to, to keep things rolling. Um, I'll start, I'll introduce, I'll let them introduce themselves. I'll introduce myself really quickly. I'm Mike Simmons. I'm the uh, CEO of a company called Driveway, um, and we were the, we're the company that brought mobile only to the, the usage-based insurance, to so the car insurance business. So if you anybody's familiar with usage-based insurance, um, you know, progressive snapshots, probably the most popular incarnation of that. It used to be a device-based business. You plug a device into a car, into the OBD port, which nobody knows that they even have one, but you're bringing hardware into the insurance business, and it was a huge amount of friction. And, and so the problem we solved was we took away the hardware from that equation. We're able to do it just all from, from an app on the, on the smartphone. So whether the phone's in your pocket or in, in your uh, cup holder, we can do it without adding any, any hardware to the, the equation. So it solved the problem for the insurers around scalability. Now we've, we've fixed the, uh, the cost and the friction problem, getting hardware out of the mix. So, um, so that's the problem we solved. Uh, so I want to introduce, let these guys introduce themselves and maybe say a couple sentences about the problem that, uh, that you're solving with your business. Go right down the line. Go down the line, starting with M for Matt. Fair enough. Uh, can you all hear me? Because we didn't do a mic check. Hello, hello, <laughs> hello. Good morning. I'm Matt Aaron. I'm the co-founder of the Insurance Agent Mobile Application. Uh, we stay very laser focused on the need of the 40,000 independent insurance agents uh, of America to uh, help them redefine how they engage with their customers so that, that they can extend the uh, customer lifetime value. We're integrated with agency management systems and that allows agencies to truly pivot so that they can deliver a service level that is equal to any of the disruptors here or any of the companies here, directs or captives. Uh, we're also doing a, a second capital raise before the end of the year. So uh, anybody who's interested in that, happy to talk with you. I'm Adam Lyons, founder and CEO of thezebra.com. Uh, we are uh, like a kayak for car insurance. So compare about 200 car insurance companies on our website. Uh, we are fully, we're a licensed agency in all 50 states, so in many cases we do actually fill policies on behalf of the insurance company. Uh, we were started in 2012 and we're, we're based out of Austin, Texas. Hi, I'm uh, Rick Natch, uh, CEO of Presidio Interactive. Uh, been in the insurance space for 22 uh, plus years and uh, started in um, uh, insurance technology as an entrepreneur and as an executive of a public company, probably the first uh, public 
uh, insure tech company there is. And uh, what we're working on with our new technology, Quilt Cloud, is how to take all the information that's available to a uh, consumer and transform that to where we can create a really fantastic shopping experience for individuals. Great. Uh, I'm Karin. I'm the CEO of Cover. I'm working on a mobile insurance app. It's super simple. You take a picture of something you want to insure, and we get your insurance. So uh, we're licensed in all 50 states as well. We've uh, processed something like 50,000 requests for auto, home, pets, jewelry, electronics, drones, uh, sell people taking selfies, trying to get life insurance, um, <laughs> just about anything you can think of uh, since we started the company as in January. Uh, as part of Y Combinator's uh, winter 2016 batch. Awesome. All right, so I have a few questions I'm going to throw at the panel just to, to you know, get things rolling. But um, we, might, we might go off topic here and, and, uh, and riff a little bit. So, um, and also feel free to ask. I don't think we're going to do a Q&A at the end. So if you have any questions along the way, um, you want to jump in, just, just give me the nod, and I'll try to find a, a spot for you. Um, so uh, first question, uh, people talk about mobile in their, their business strategy, it can mean a lot of different things, right? From one end, it's just a, you know, maybe a, a mobile optimized uh, website to the other end of the spectrum could be a completely mobile first, you know, insurance business that doesn't exist outside of a mobile app. Um, so I think this, this, the topic of this uh, session can be pretty broad. Um, what I'd love to hear from the panel is, you know, kind of what mobile looks like, what it means to your business today and what you think uh, mobile looks like in the future of your business. So, um, Rick, you want to start? Sure. Sure, yeah. So for us, we see mobile, uh, really, it's, you know, ba the basics of mobile is that it's a phone, and it's a communication device, and so we have the opportunity to communicate with people really based on their preferences, but, you know, by and large, a lot of policies are still sold over the phone. So first and foremost, that's the important thing. Secondarily, you know, there's all this information, all this data that is collected on your phone, and we're looking at that and seeing a great opportunity just to take that information and append it and provide it to the consumer to provide them valuable feedback uh, in the sales process, which is really exciting. Uh, third, you know, I think a phone has all these new tools available, which are helpful in claims. You can take photos. Uh, you can do a lot of different things with uh, the tools that are available on the phone. You can also use the local um, you know, search functions to find uh, different vendors for different things. Um, but when I think about, you know, where, what's next after mobile, I guess what I always resonates with me and where I think things are headed <coughs> is really the connected home, the connected auto, um, realizing that we're all connected in different ways and there's a lot of, you know, IoT uh, innovations that are happening that are really going to take us into the next era, which will provide, you know, more data, more convenience for consumers, and you know, ultimately, more insights, more evolution opportunities for insurance companies. So. Cool. Um, any follow-up thoughts, Matt? You want to? The device yeah. is purely a conduit. It's software that goes into it. So when you think about what can they do, it's everybody in here who will think through what if. Uh, we are constantly being challenged by our customers to say, wouldn't it be cool if? And then you take that 10 questions down the road, and they realize, yeah, that's not such a you know, great idea. Uh, however, there are some real opportunities to capitalize on that's a, the, either the device itself or ways of uh, doing things very differently. So, and it really does take a uh, mind shift change. Uh, when Scott from Trove was talking in the uh, earlier session about the beauty of that software, the rule of thumb is the easier it was to use, the harder it was to build. So, you know, when you look at what they built, it, it's a work of beauty because the end user sees it that way. So, but it's all going to be mobile, and we're all using it. So, I keep going. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I can tell. Yeah. Um, all right, so another, th another thought. Um, you know, this, first of all, I'm completely shocked. I don't know if everybody, everybody else is, but like, all, I didn't know that there were 1,500 people in InsureTech, and, and this conference kind of came out of nowhere, and everybody, I don't know if it's because they wanted to go to Vegas for a few days, but uh, pretty, pretty impressed. But, you know, what it says to me is, is uh, InsureTech is pretty hot right now. You know, we, you could argue we might be reaching peak InsureTech at some point soon based on, you know, how many people are here and the investor interest and everything. And I think about, you know, why that's happening. This, you know, we were all in InsureTech before it was cool, you know, before they had a name for it. But, uh, um, you know, I think, you know, maybe that's happening because 
the traditional model is is broken to some extent, right? Is it it's the you know there's inefficient sales models and there's a bunch of conflict between the insurer and the customer and and that kind of thing. So um, you know, a question I guess for the panel is 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 mobile the answer? You know, is, is can can mobile fix what's broken or is it mainly just a, a you know another customer acquisition channel? Um, Adam, any any thoughts? Yeah, no, I, I think you know it. Whether it's whether it's the answer, or not, I mean, this is just everyone today has a computer in their hand. Everyone's you know, it's, it's, it everything is on. Large part of our traffic is mobile, um, if, if not you know, approaching the majority. So I think, you know, today when we think about mobile, I think one of the things that uh, you know, big big buzzword is big data, right? But we look at we look today and we're able to start to segment folks. And we see mobile's very high intent. A lot of times, you know, we're focused on auto insurance. When folks are in dealerships, they're they're going on their phone when they when they see something on TV and they're reacting to it and they want it right away. And so, um, we're able to leverage mobile in that way, which has been really big for us. Um, you know, when you think about the future of mobile and and where it's going, um, can it solve a lot of these problems? There's a lot of challenges in insurance. I think yeah, insure tech. Is this, is this new thing, the industry is really starting to invest in technology and, and specifically mobile. And so we're seeing carriers on our side really start to, to you know, you said it correctly, I think, where if it's, if it's simple and easy, it's actually really, really hard to do, right? And so we're seeing a lot of carriers go back and really rethink the funnel uh, for folks to, to have a really good experience and go through, which is, which is really changing things a bit. And, um, you know, one of the things that, and I think the future, when we think about mobile, it really comes down to education, right? It's not, it's not only a tool to acquire customers, but really help folks understand what they're, what they're purchasing and, and what they should be looking at and what they should be thinking about. Because again, insurance uh, is not well understood by consumers. And so I think, um, you know, mobile is, is, a, is a, a really good tool and we're working on a lot of ways to start to help folks actually understand what it is that they're, that they're comparing. Yeah, attention. Shopping. Yep. 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 Um, any other thoughts from the panel? Karn? You have yeah, sure. sure. So uh, the answer is you cannot think of it as simply a customer acquisition channel or you will fail. Uh, Geico, Progressive, the Hartford, Farmers, all of these guys have apps uh, and none of them do any meaningful sales original, origination volume through them. And the reason is because they view them as either servicing tools or as lead gen. Uh, to, to build their books. You have to start to think of mobile uh, you know, as, a, as an opportunity to re-engage a customer and to provide them with some utility outside of the transaction. It's not a sufficient condition to have a very slick mobile front end to make it super like, seamless and, and easy to use. Um, you actually do need to figure out what matters to the customer, right? And so we run smoke tests like this all the time. Um, you download cover, you'll see that we've got a credit card scanner that scans your credit card and programmatically pulls out insurance policies that are on the card. So we automatically populate rent, uh, you know, rental car insurance, travel, uh, extended warranties, things like that that are actually offering value to a customer. Have zero marginal cost to me to implement, uh, but it's, it's, as long as you can start to think in the mindset of this is an insurance utility and outside of the transaction I need to be offering the customer some value to using the product, then you have a direct line of communication to your customer at any given point in time. This is what folks spend billions of dollars trying to do, stay top of mind, right? And so if you can give them a reason to keep an app on their phone, uh, you can sell them basically anything at any point in time. That's how you should be thinking about it. Yeah, I just add to that and say, you know, particularly in the healthcare space where you know enrollments happen on an annual basis, that interaction, that engagement that they can have, you can stay, you know, front and center in their minds at that time when they need you. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's kind of that ongoing communication with the consumer that's really excited about. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So, you know, one obvious question I'm thinking about: what's the what are what are people you know going to want to learn from this panel? Um, I think about the, you know, we talk about mobile and then you, you have to think about the agent, what the, the agent's role is, you know, today and in the future. Um, you know, is there even a role for an agent in the, in the kind of the mobile first future? You think about the, the, you know, millennial generation, they're already there, right? They don't want to talk to people anymore. Um, they want to interact with the device. You think about the, the post-millennial generation, or will they even tolerate a customer experience that involves talking to a human being, right? So what's the, uh, um, what are some thoughts on, on the role of the agent in this, this kind of mobile first future? Um, Matt? I gotta, I gotta take this one, um, because I work with a lot of agents and agencies. 
um, the role of the agent will change and it will evolve and it will not be the same tomorrow or next year as it is today. They're starting to wake up to that. However, um, what can help them with that as they engage with their clients will be mobile. Uh, when I look to where this industry is right now, uh, I do look to banking because I, I've been a B of A customer for 25 years and I've watched their mobile initiatives evolve. And they have a great body of research on how their customers adopted mobile and how they have moved through to utilize it. We're only, right now, 43% of B of A's customers are utilizing B of A's app, but they're accessing the bank 72 million times a week, okay? And they barely go into a branch. However, they also have research that says that 83% of the time, those customers will visit a branch at least once every six months. So the millennials are telling us we don't want to have face-to-face -face contact. We do want to engage. We want to do it our way. But what the millennials are also, there's a body of research on this that will say, they'll tap their way through until they get to that point where I need a human and I want a human. And that's where the agent will come in. So I do think that there is a vital role that they will play. This is a $4 trillion dollar industry, you're not going to wipe them out overnight. It is so fragmented and the relationships are so deep that there's a real commitment that these businesses have to both their community. The millennials aren't as concerned about that. We recognize that. But the millennials are now just starting to buy stuff from 18 to 35 years old. You know, they don't know even anything about insurance. So I think there's a role for the digital disruptors. Absolutely. And I think they're going to get them into the tent. And then I think it will evolve into. But the agents do need to evolve, and they're starting to wake up to that. They are very far behind on this, for sure. In fact, this conference, there is virtually no representation on the independent agency uh, from that arena. And we pointed that out to them. And it blew them away that this conference was taking place, and they did not know about it. And when they thought about it and they realized, okay, even our agency management systems aren't even represented in any meaningful way here. Okay, wake up, okay? You guys cannot be doing business the way you've been doing it for so long. And this is where technology can be of great benefit to them to help them move forward. But they recognize that uh, they can't do it the way they've been doing it. Sorry, that's a long answer, but uh, no, that's really good. a lot that's of passion with this. So. Yeah, I, I personally think, you know, agents are now more necessary than ever, um, especially when you look at, granted, the role is changing and there is some evolution happening to the agent, but when you look at what happened with Obamacare, when the Affordable Care Act got passed, we look, agents were largely minimized on the exchanges and aren't really involved, and it's been horrible. You know, consumers are more confused, more upset than they've ever been. And I think that really speaks volumes for what, you know, agents do for people. I think agents really want to help people. And um, there is a, uh, a purpose for them to exist and to, to participate. And, you know, I think, um, you know, United Healthcare actually just did a survey of consumers looking at, you know, what do consumers really understand about their insurance policy. And I think 7% could name the four basic principles of how a health plan, you know, works and what, what it operates on. 7% of people is, that's a huge gap for four basic items on a health plan. So I think you know, what we're looking to do is really take information, create an education process that's part of the consumer journey so that we make agents more productive, we uh, help people find the right plan. It's possible now more than ever. And so that's kind of how we see the agent role evolving. Granted, there'll be more digital. Uh, we see that there's a ton of information, especially if you can append their data with really insightful information, you can help them on that journey. So I just wanted to pipe in and offer a, an opposing view. Um, you know, I think I think agents, when it comes on the property side, when it comes to commoditized products, are gone. Uh, when it comes to more complex risks, uh, you know, commercial lines, in some instances, group health, things like that, they have a they have a place within the ecosystem. We have quantitative evidence to show this. Like we we have a very significant clip of customers who come through our products all the time, um, and none of them want to talk to agents. Right? Uh, they want to have a conversation via text. 80% of our business happens over text message. Um, you, know, you may think that's an abstraction of like, the human-to-human -human relationship, but you can communicate a fair uh, you know, information with a uh, you know, high degree of fidelity. Right? Folks in this business, don't even, like, fo our customers don't even know what a deductible is, but you can simply explain that in simple terms. Um, so yes, like the, the short answer is, in my line of business, I think they're gone. Um, and, and so you know, the, the test is basically, you know, pick a state, 
pick any state, uh, you know, Arkansas, uh, you know, Google Arkansas independent agent. Try calling them. They'll pick up one third of the time. And the reason is That's they've true. built up, they've built, That's you true. know, their businesses over the last 20 to 25 years. They're sitting on nice, cushiony, you know, uh, recurring cash flow businesses, and they don't care that much. They're they're off golfing, right? Um, and so it's an opportunity for me to, yep. to step in and create really elegant, really useful products that replace them really quickly. Um, so that's my point of view. Yeah. They want to retire before this whole thing yeah. blows up, right? Yeah. <laughs> Good. And no, thank you for the, uh, the conflict. It's not a panel without some, yeah. some conflict, so yeah. go could, for it. I could see a commoditized product it being a little bit less uh, useful to have an agent, but you know, especially when you look at Medicare, you look at places, people really want to talk to somebody. They really want to have that vote of confidence. Life insurance is the same way. They want to understand they're in the right you know, policy, the right, right plan for them, and they want to get that, that message directly from an agent, a professional. So we can agree to disagree on some of that. <laughs> all right, another question. So uh, we're at this conference. There's a bunch of startups here. They're all looking to disrupt insurance. Um, and I, when I think of startups and insurance, I, th I put them in kind of two categories. One is you're, you know, you're, you're taking a full stack approach and you want to come in and sort of completely displace the traditional model and the traditional insurance, insurance agency. So you take this, the, you know, you, some of these startups are building the full stack approach. And then you've got this other group of startups that's trying to disrupt insurance by saving, solving a pain point in, in, within the existing ecosystem. Um, so my question to the panel is, you know, what, what's right? What do you think is, uh, is, is the right approach? Go full stack or solve a, solve a pain point? Um, Karen, you want to yeah, start? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, we started as a brokerage. Um, and, and the reason is we made a bet uh, based on, on what we were observing people doing with our app, right? Uh, the way you build consumer product is you observe how people use your products and the interesting ways that you know, they, they request things like people taking selfies to get life insurance, and then you build product features to support those things. We have, we have never seen a request for a micro duration policy. We have never seen a request for a single like item policy. We get the odd Gucci loafers and things like that. Um, but by and large, people are asking for your products, right? What this means is the insurance company has product market fit. Uh, and so I want to be able to sell stuff that people will buy. And the only way that I'm comfortable in a very disciplined way approaching this problem is figuring out, you know, do the unit economics of acquisition on mobile work? And the answer I think right now is yes. Um, you know, can I scale this business to be, uh, you know, sizable and meaningful? And I think on mobile the answer is yes. And then can I take a disciplined approach and look at, you know, what lines uh, you know, what geographies and what demographics uh, you know, are the most profitable customers for me? Where do I have the highest retention? Where I have the, the lowest loss ratios? And then as soon as you can figure out like, what the customer cares about and who the most profitable customers are, the rest of it is difficult, right? Like moving down the stack is difficult, but it's largely mechanical, right? And so when I have conversations with folks about like, you know, what's the, the agency management system you use or the policy management system you use. You know, all of that is a moot point. It's worth zero if you have zero customers, right? Um, and so it, for us, brokerage was the, the easiest way into the business. It was, you know, it was a capital efficient way into the business. Uh, we have products that people want to buy, right? They're looking to buy with a, with a little bit of, you know, uh, education thrown into the mix. Um, but it made sense. I, I, do, I do respect and I do understand um, you know, the approach that the full stack folks are taking. Uh, you know, they, they think that there are you know, uh, cost efficiencies and operational efficiencies uh, that they can wring out of uh, you know, the transaction and the customer that, uh, that you guys can't. Um, you know, that's, that's the bet they're making, but I, I'm taking what I think is a more, dis more disciplined approach. Yeah, you know, to add that, I, I don't, I don't know the right answer either. I think yeah. there's, you know, there, there's certainly a, a really interesting viewpoint perspective on the full stack model. Our approach, you know, at the very beginning was, yeah, same, same thing, Karn. I think you're right. If you're building a consumer platform, you really there's one way to understand what consumers want, and that's just to watch, you know, what folks are asking for and what folks are, are doing. And so we started by saying, look. You know, again, education. A lot of folks don't understand what it, what insurance is, what's out there, what they should be looking at. So, how do we get? You know, folks aren't thinking about the captive channel versus the independent agent channel or direct. And so, how do we get everyone in the same platform? Allow folks to go through. 
Um, and then, you know, our, our model is, you know, where we are working within the existing framework saying, okay, in some cases we will fulfill the policy as a broker uh, on that side of it. And if, if direct folks or captives want to engage and, and, and acquire customers in, in, in other ways, then, then we'll facilitate that as well. So I think, you know, uh, that, that's been our approach and, and, and certainly not trying to, uh, to, to go and underwrite risks or, or, uh, or do any of that today. Can I have one thing? Yeah. Um, I don't think that uh, as no man can be an island. Uh, this is such a highly fragmented industry. I think it's really tough for any company to be an island. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, if this were 2015, InsureTech 2015, because it didn't exist last year, um, I think we'd all be talking about Google Compare right now. Mm -hmm. Safe to say, mm -hmm. right? They're gone for now. Uh, I would never count them out. But this is what's fascinating about what everybody is doing up here and what's so really cool about it because everybody is focused on trying to solve an issue and, and get to the need of what's happening. And they've all got great ideas and they've all got great platforms to do it. So, and it's all, at, at the end of the day, it's all about how the end user is gonna experience it, like it, and adopt it. But this is what I love about what's going on. You got some great companies in here, they're doing great work, but Google's gone, right? You've got Lemonade and Trove being talked about, and I can't wait to find out what's going to be talked about next year. Yeah. Cool. Anything else? All right. We're at the four-minute mark, so um, you know what that means. Time for the lightning round. <laughs> we've got to, we're going to finish our panel strong here, right? We've got to, so we've got a lightning round. It's not a, it's not a uh, you know, new disruptive technology unless there's a bunch of buzzwords to go with it. So I'm going to throw out a few buzzwords to sure. the panel, and I'm going to get their... Uh, Start with their one word response. There's, there's only two choices. The, uh, the, the buzzword is a, um, it, it's, it's either going to hit or it's going to be a miss. So you can respond with, you know, it's the next Amazon or it's the next Segway. All right? Yeah. So here we go. All right. I'm, and I'm just going to go down in order here. Sure. First thing that comes to your mind P2P. Miss. Segway. Uh, Segway. 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 All right. Sorry. Wow. Segway. Sorry, segue. That is solid agreement on P2P. All right. We'll, di um, we'll dive back into that later if we have time. Uh, Chatbots. Hit. It's a virtual you assistant. You have to phrase the, uh, the question. Yes, Amazon. My apologies. Amazon. I'm slow there you go. up here. Alex Trebek would be mad. Let's say segue. Segue. Amazon from a servicing point of view, right. a segue from a origination point of view. Right. All right. That's not what we're doing. Finally, some disagreement. All right. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Uh, IoT. Amazon. 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 It's an Amazon. Amazon. All right. Yeah. AI. Amazon. Just yeah. don't know what year. <laughs> yeah. no, I'd say or if it's going to kill us all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Amazon. We're doing a lot For of sure. work with Watson, so Amazon. Yeah, All right. exactly. Yeah. All right, we'll go the other direction now. Um, big data. <laughs> yes, it's too broad. Uh, I'm just going to say Amazon because there's parts of it. Uh, okay. Yeah, Amazon as well. It's yeah, it, that's broad, I agree. Amazon yeah. for sure. Okay. Amazon, but this is like continuous improvement yeah. from the 90s. You know, yeah. it's data. Okay, what did you yeah. do yeah. to harness the value of that data? And it's, it's there, just do something with it. I so. don't know what it means. No, I'm just <laughs> saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on, on demand. Start with your end. Uh, miss. Yeah, segue. I'd say Amazon. Hmm. I'd say Amazon. All right, a little controversy there. Yeah. All right, here's That's my favorite. Blockchain. Uh. Hit. And can I explain why? You have to. Uh, OK, OK. So um, you, there are a bunch of insurers in this room. Have you, you guys know what the cost of pulling an MVR is, <laughs> right, by state? Imagine that every single vehicle in every home uh, and all of the data related to those homes exists on the blockchain. How would that improve your customer experience on the front end? You'd be able to give an accurate price right away. You'd save a ton of money. Blockchain is a, is a hit. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I'm not one, so sure. One Amazon. I'd say Segway. Segway. Uh, for this reason, I say Amazon. If anybody saw 60 Minutes, it's a, the segment they did on blockchain recently, there's too much big money behind it, and they rule. And there's big money, big names, and I'm thinking, they don't lose. So for that reason, I would say Amazon. I don't know. Excellent. All right. I'm going to say, I'm going to say segue until I figure out how it works. Right. All right, the last one. <laughs> Drones. Um, 
You're insuring them, man. Come on, you yeah, gotta yeah. Look. Okay, hit. So Amazon. <laughs> now keep it a segue. I'd say Amazon. Uh, you know, when you think about also what you're able to do on the claim side and the underwriting side with drones, yeah. I think I think it's huge. Agreed. Amazon. Awesome. I'm a fan of drones. I want my yeah. Chipotle burrito coming on drones. It's coming soon. <laughs> Incoming. All right. So I, what I got out of that was was uh, um, P2P got slammed across the board. Yeah. Which. I understand. We've got to, we've got to the, figure out. The, diffi I think the difficulty, be is, the difficulty is the term has been obfuscated, right? Like it means different things to different people. And quite frankly, the way it's being employed right now is pretty disingenuous, right? Like um, when you talk about like redistributing like underwriting profits when there are no underwriting profits to be redistributed, yeah. that's disingenuous. Um, mm. yeah. Right on. All right. That's a wrap. That's all we got. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone.